look at the basics of a palm stroke. We'll start off here with what part of the hand you should actually be using. We're aiming to use this section here. When you think of palm, you might think of right, palming something, like you're palming a coin, which would go in the middle here. But really, we want to use the bit below that for the strike. If you are controlling someone, then you can use this part here, this more beloved bit, to gain control of the head, for example. The impact itself must have two sort of paths, a path forward and a path back, if it's a strike. One, two, or one, two. Which brings me on to the next part. Often when you see palm strikes, you'll see these different types of angles. And in Wing Chun, for example, you'll see a form, and in the form, maybe you have something like this, using a vertical palm, and another time you'll have one here, using a sort of horizontal angle. Now the time to change is based on your own body, yeah? It's very simple, all right? The angles we use of the hand vary from up here and we can strike anywhere, anywhere, any of these angles going all the way down to six o'clock, so from 12 to six. The time to change the angle from this 12 idea is based on your own reach. You want, as I said, you want to hit with the base of the um, palm, right? So when it gets down to around your sternum height, your heel of your hand is no longer leading the charge. Now your fingers are starting to lead the charge, which means that if you go any further, you're gonna bend your own arm back, your own hand back, bringing about trauma at the wrist. So when you get to the round the sternum height, really we should be looking to start changing the angle to a sideward one, because the targets are changing as well anyway. So now we're looking to go more into the ribs, the side of the body, etc., depending on angle of your opposition, all right? So from here to here. The upward one is something you'd use under a jaw or anything that you can get under. Okay, so with this palm strike, if I'm using this vertical palm, I'm going straight under a jaw and it drives through. Remember, for a strike, you need two parts of the journey. You need the outbound and the return. That makes it impactful. So quick out, quick back. Put your hip into it. Make sure you hook your thumb, all right? Because you don't want to damage your thumb if it catches onto something, right? So quick in, quick out, there's your strike. You can use that, as I said, anywhere. If I'm at the side of her, I might not use this completely vertical one. I might do it here, it fits like a glove, right? So just bam, straight into the jaw here, quick in, quick out. If I'm here, quick in, quick out. Make sure you, you've got enough space to follow through. Not just one of these weak, pathetic little follow throughs here. Go straight through the jaw. Yeah, just like here, straight through the jaw. So you're turning your hip through the target. That's the impact one. I could also do it here. If her jaw was forwards, I don't know, I manipulated her, pulled her forward or evaded her somehow, that's when this angle is going to come into effect. Can you see? So we already looked at this one. We've looked at a bit here. We're looking now at this six o'clock angle. Where I push up, and once again, that can go crack into the jaw. Step back a second. Crack into the jaw. Right, so if the mouth's even a little bit open, it's problems. Boom, right? Now they're the push versions, they're the strike versions, but we can also consider control. If you're looking to control someone, you maintain a pressure. Now what that does is that it takes away a little bit of the power of the strike, but it gives you extra control of the person. Because when I push here, as long as I'm holding onto some other part of her body, be it her arm or even my hand on, on the lower portion of her back, then she's not gonna get out of my reach. If I just do it here, at some point she gets out of my reach and I'm playing catch up. So here, if I'm holding her, it's, she can't recover. If I'm holding her, she can't recover. They're pushes. Now the idea with them is I'm gonna keep on pushing her Maybe until her head hits the wall, or until she's so unstable that then I can start working somewhere else. But we also can pull. If her head is forwards, when I push like this, at some point I lose potential of going forward because watch what happens to her head. Look, she's looking at you now. Look, like copper. <laughs> yeah? So at this point, it's me continuing to push. So whereas with one of them, watch my elbow, it searches forwards. With this one, now I bring the elbow back and it turns into a pull. So you go, you hit, you don't just touch, you hit, you continue, 
pull or you hit, you continue and you control. Now once you hit, remember where we're hitting with, right? You can then move it into the control portion of the hand and you can grab, yeah? So we're controlling the hand, we grab the face and you're grabbing that face, right? Yeah? Then from here, if they get a little bit lively, they feel like they're getting out of it, then you slip the fingers up a little bit more towards the eyes. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.